Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish on, baby. They're right there in front of me. It's wild turkeys. Oh my God, it might be a giant catfish. That is huge. Welcome to another episode, guys. We're out in the desert. I brought a bunch of fishing gear along because there's multiple fish species. There's rattlesnakes out here. We got the dogs. I don't know how this is all gonna work, but that's okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do this, man. Also, I wanted to show you guys something that a fan made. This came from Pat. It's a tiny van, a Northwest Fishing Secrets van, bobber. <laughs> we're gonna get a bobber down with the camper van. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Just know that this baby's gonna live in the van forever unless I lose it today fishing. So I really hope that doesn't happen. Got a couple of uh, spinning setups right there. I made a whole bunch of bullet lures <laughs> that, uh, that we're gonna take along too. So we're, we're armed for some serious fishing. Uh, this is the camper van. Just thought, this isn't like a van walkthrough or anything, but I just thought I'd show you real quick um, if you haven't seen the van yet. And what it looks like nothing real has happened here since the last video just a little bit of some storage that's got 12 volt power nice uh like a pine ceiling and uh but we're gonna turn off all the lights got a little kitchen right here built-in stove uh water boom right there so it just makes camping and traveling to shoot these fishing videos for you guys a little bit easier anyways enough talking let's go ahead and get on the trail catch some fish Guys, there's a snake over here. I don't know exactly what species this is. It's not a rattlesnake. Uh, right next to the trail. But you can see he's in this little hole. <laughs> he's in there smiling at us. Hello, Mr. Snake. We're gonna like leave you alone now so that he can do his thing. Walking down to a railroad track. Looks like a beautiful oasis down there. And we're just gonna like get down to the water and we're just gonna start fishing one hole after the other. I bet it's full of fish there. Yeah, it's a big train, huh? <laughs> I'm down in this kind of deserty, bushy area, and look at what we just found in front of us. I don't even know what this is. It's a weird, giant bug. I don't know what that is. It's really weird and kind of scary looking at it, but I think it's, I think it's a cricket. Just a weird cricket that I don't have in my part of the state over in Western Washington. I don't think we have those there. Huh, weird. Ah. <laughs> He's coming for me. <laughs> Thank you for saying hi, little Mr. Cricket. Oh, I bet he would have made fantastic bait though. And look at this cool landscape down here, dude. So all those rock walls behind me, they're actually natural. Uh, the rock is called basalt. I believe it's some kind of like a volcanic rock. Oh man, look at this. Oh geez, I almost snapped my poles off on the bushes there. Whoa! Cow. <laughs> Got the entire canyon to ourselves. No one else here. Unbelievable. We're gonna fish this. I'm really curious if we could fish this year already. Like maybe, man, maybe with the fly. Let's do this. All 
Oh my god. Oh my. What is this? What have I done? That's right. I put my fly pole away with all the line on it. There we go. I like having that fly pole ready to go. <laughs> all right. You know, we're just going to start with the fly that we've got on here right now. I'm not a big fly fisherman, not an expert at this. Oh, you know what? I'm going to pull out a little net too. We're going to need a net. Like I'm confident we're going to catch something. <laughs> I mean, I think we will. Ah, ow, get out of there. There we go. No barb. All good. You know, and this is only about a foot deep right in front of me, but it might have fish in it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just find out. Right into the waterfall. Nothing there. Come on, baby. I feel like right there, that should have some fish in it. Looks like kind of a slightly deeper hole. Oh yeah, come on, there's gotta be something right here. Ooh, little, little dry fly action going. Nothing. Huh. Well, kind of as expected, nothing in this little pool up here. There might be some small fish that just aren't biting. But if you guys are like me and still new to fly fishing, a small pool like this might be great to start and that way you don't need to make these giant casts. You can just kind of dip that fly right in front of you. All right, I'm kind of thinking I want to fish somewhere. I want to fish this big pool here. The big pool has got to have some fish in it. So we're going to kind of sneak down to the water here. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yes. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Another wise YouTube fisherman who has fished this area said in his video to fish the foam. So we're gonna fish the foam. Right by the foam, come on. Maybe over in that corner. Come on, right under the foam. We're just stripping the line a little bit at a time. Wow, nothing on the fly. That, I did not expect that. Huh. So we might come back to the fly later, but we still have the van bobber that I really want to try. I bet the van bobber is going to be fire. And uh, we're going to try a bullet lure. I think this hole needs, we need to send a bullet in here. That'll, that'll work. Here we go. Here we go. So I've been prototyping a bunch with like some newer ones. This here's the classic nine mil bullet lure. Then these little guys, the 25 AC people or you've seen me use this a lot in the mountains and stuff so what I found is that these little guys they spin a lot better I just use an, uh, an improved clinch knot I know there's probably better knots but you know what rather than learning 20 knots learn one knot really well and you'll do great with it so here we go first time out with this little baby here Ooh, man she's looking good no more messing around with the fly just kidding, I really wanted to catch one with the fly. We're gonna get down a little closer to the water so I can fish a little deeper with that lure. Oh yes, first cast with that baby. Oh yeah, there she is. She's spinning in the water. First cast with the bullet lure. First cast ever on this one. What a special moment. Oh! I think we just had a follow like right up to me. I saw a little brown shape come after it. That's promising. Oh, 
one that's a fish. I knew one right in front of us. I knew it. Second cast. Oh, got him. <laughs> I knew there was a fish right there. Oh yeah, a smallie, smallmouth bass. Here, we're gonna keep him in the water. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. We're just gonna like wet our hand a little to handle this fish. Oh, 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 it's all right, little guy. It's all right. Look at that beautiful little, uh, little smallmouth bass right there. Awesome. All right, but we're gonna go ahead and release this little guy. Oh, and he's off. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, that was awesome. First fish of the day. All right, we're gonna try a different spot. We're gonna head right down there at the base of all these falls. And uh, the river keeps going that way, but we're not gonna fish there in this video. That's gonna be a whole nother episode, boys and girls. We're gonna try Pat's bobber now. All right, so take a nice close look at this bobber. Freaking cool and it's accurate. It's got the paint in the right spots down there, the brown paint, got the little antenna. Man, <laughs> we've got a, we got a van slip float, guys. Look at that. So to top off this juicy looking bobber, we're gonna throw on a juicy looking worm, which will, oh yeah, this guy here, this guy, perfect. I knew it, the moment I saw him, it was love at first sight, he's ready. I'm just using like a little, little like a panfish hook. And I just kinda start threading that worm up there. So this worm right here, totally ready to go, man. Ready to go in the water. Wipe your hands on your pants. Just don't tell your parents about it. Let's do this. Let's go, baby. What do you guys think? Are we kind of in the right spot here? We're gonna go to like a solid four feet or something. Yeah, I feel good about this. Let's see how the bobber floats. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. That van's just like hanging there. He's like, oh no. All right, let's get him into the action. I think the fish are probably, probably over there. Oh, I see the little yellow van. I didn't know my van floats, man. That's like really nice to know, actually. It's kind of like the Arima, an unsinkable boat, unsinkable van. Maybe the fish are right here at this little edge. Come on, man. We're just gonna walk with the bobber here and see what happens. Nice. Gonna be touching stuff. Don't want him getting stuck. Don't want to lose the setup here. You know, I'm thinking we might need to get him way back there in that foam. Oh yes, there we go, there we go. That's the spot. All right, come on, man, come on. There's gotta be a fish sitting in the tail out there. Fish, they either sit under the waterfalls or in front of the waterfalls, like at the tail outs of pools. Nothing on that one, that's all right, that's all right. Van is in perfect condition still, no damage. I wonder if the fish here wanna bite worms. Maybe they don't like worms here, I don't know. Let's see if the bull lure can do it here. Oh, man, look at that casting distance. Almost flung it into the waterfall. Come on, baby. Whoa, I just saw something jump. Did you see that? Something tried jumping the waterfall like a salmon. That's not, what? There shouldn't, there, there's no way there's salmon here. No way, I guarantee it. There's a waterfall here that's a little too big for a salmon to jump over. All right, what about right here? Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish on, baby. <laughs> Looks like a smallie. Oh, oh, jumper. Come on, baby, come on. Oh, in the net. <laughs> Got him. There we go, there we go. It's okay, buddy, it's okay. It's all right, it's all right. We'll get you out of there. Wet my hand a little bit. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Ah, he poked me. Poked me with the bullet lure. I almost got bulleted. Oh, he's he's back. He's back. He's back. Oh, and there he goes. That's good. Instant release. 
I like that. All right, last cast with the van bobber. We're gonna, actually, let me just check him and make sure he's not like falling apart or something. No, he's good, he's good. Just wanna make sure I don't like lose him. There we go, in that foam with the deep bobber setting, it's the best shot we can give this guy here. The fish here might not like worms. I have a hard time catching bass on worms. They usually like lures more or live crawdads and stuff like that. But a worm, I was hoping for something else in here, but it might not be here right now. Hmm. Unbelievable. I'm completely shocked that the worms could not do anything here. Not as many fish as I thought there would be, but that's okay. We're gonna head back to the van, get over to the uh, river where we're gonna spend the night before it's dark, and then uh, maybe fly the drone a little bit and uh, catch some catfish. I really wanna try and catch a catfish, do a catfish catch and cook with you guys. We've never done that before, so uh, <laughs> I gotta get out of here because it's about to get like really dark. It's deceiving. I'm working on a way to get you guys some more bullet lures, by the way. I know that uh, a lot of you <laughs> have been asking, how do I get the bullet lures? Give me another few weeks and I'll have a good solution for you. Guys, there's a there's a turkey right here. A wild turkey. There's two turkeys. Look at them. They know that they're in a protected area if this were hunting season. Oh, 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 totally different scenario. They're right there in front of me. It's wild turkeys. Look at them. Hey little turkey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, girl? Hey. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll leave them alone. I don't want to like bug them too much, but had to come over and say hi to them. Beautiful animals. Those are big birds. Yeah. That was cool. They let me Let's get so close. Go if we get the drone driving across. The bridge. at our campsite. Uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can't get some drone shots just before the sun goes down completely. It's already late. Uh, we're gonna try and get a couple lines in the water to maybe catch like some catfish or something here at night. We're gonna have a little fire. going all right so we're gonna do a little bit of nighttime catfishing super simple this is just a little spinning uh setup here with an ugly stick so on our main line here you can see we've got this little slider uh with a three ounce uh, pyramid weight on there down to a swivel and then we've got a uh 20 pound mono leader about that long and down at the bottom i've just got one of these little hooks right here smoke's getting to my eyes uh, for bait we're just going to use a piece of old trout that unfortunately like went bad it sat out uh too long so it's just some raw trout just like that i'm assuming there could be catfish here i caught one years ago out at this point here so let's cast it out and see if we can catch another one we're just going to try and cast out as far as we can There we go. That baby's way out there. So I've got one of these little guys that we're just gonna stick in the ground and that's a pole holder. And then we're just gonna tighten our line a little bit. We just want some tension at the tip of the pole here. So you can see that line is tight. What we're gonna do is just put a bell right here. 
That way, if a fish bites, we'll know. <laughs> All right, now we're just gonna sit back and wait. So this is the fun thing about fishing with a bell like that on the bottom is we're just waiting for that sound. And we're just gonna be doing like other stuff, maybe make a little food or something. And uh, then all of a sudden, ring, ring, ring. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's see what happens, man. What's that? Just gonna follow you around all night like this. Exactly, yeah. With the weird ring light. Look at my eyes. It's like I'm like a makeup tutorial channel. <laughs> Guys, this pole, we just got a big old whack. Big old whack on the pole. We were eating some squid tacos. That was a fish for sure. That was 100% a fish. That only took a little taste. Might have gotten like hooked or pricked by that hook. Ah, so close, man. I'm running out of batteries on this ring light too. So tough things. We never know if it's her little jingle. <laughs> Or, or the bell. <laughs> so I'd probably say every couple hours, maybe reposition your bait uh, when you're bottom fishing in this style, just in case like your bait landed in between a couple of rocks or between some weeds or something like that and is inaccessible to the fish. But always let it soak for a couple hours because remember, it can take quite a while for a fish to like ferret out where that smell is coming from and to find your bait. No, I, I saw it. I saw it. It's a giant fish. Filming? Yeah, but you're blurry. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. We just uh, got a giant fish on the pole here. Oh my god, it might be a giant catfish. Oh my goodness. I thought I was snagged up for a second, but it's a giant catfish. I don't want to break off on Oh my goodness, look at this thing. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Oh. <laughs> we got him! <laughs> oh my god, he's huge! He's huge! <laughs> Look at that thing! God, look at those kitty whiskers on this thing. He's a big old kitty. Wow. Oh, it's a monster. Look at this. Absolute tank. Oh my God. That's a PB, 100% PB. By far, this is the biggest catfish I've ever caught in my life. We're, we're just gonna try to put this guy out of his misery as fast as possible. Uh, we're we're going to keep him. Catfish is some really good eating. All I wanted is one catfish. Mission accomplished. And we're done. You know, that's all I wanted. Oh, he was barely hooked in the mouth there. Here, look at this. Look at this. All right, now that this fish is um, put out of his misery, no longer suffering or anything, we're gonna go ahead and measure them real quick. I'm just really curious. 11, we'll call it 11 point, well, 11.6 pounds. I mean, I know they get a lot bigger, especially you guys down in the south. You guys have some giant catfish down there. We're not gonna let any of those fish go to waste. Check this out, they have these crushing pads. So they don't have big teeth. Instead, they have millions of little teeth right here on these pads. There's a pad here, another one here, and then there's one giant one up top. And these pads are just good to hold on to things. It's like a, you can scoot your finger this way, but not this way. And then they've got another couple way back there inside the gullet, those guys there, same thing. They're just designed to hold on to fish and scoot them down their gullet all the way into the belly. Thank you, buddy. Oh yeah, he, he's twitching a little, but he's done. He's done. We've gone straight through his brain. We bonked him several times. I just want to always make sure that we're not gutting a fish while it's still alive. That would just be terrible. Ah, 
so fresh, the heart's still pumping. Check out, that's a catfish heart right there. Oh, there's a giant creature. Ah, what is that? And we're gonna return all the guts to the river. We're just gonna bring all those nutrients back where they belong. Let all the crawdads and everything eat it. I look like I just like gutted a deer or something. I think this guy is clean enough. We're gonna put him on ice now. Whew. Check this here out. It's whirling dervish, tasting notes of molasses, chocolate, and cherry. So thank you, Bat from Bronson, for hooking us up with some coffee. You guys know I, I like drinking my coffee when I'm out on these trips, but they also hooked us up with these bags here. I haven't actually looked at one of these yet, but what these are, oh wow, wow, jeez. These are bags that the coffee comes delivered in. It's interesting, I was expecting like the smell of coffee, but my guess is they're raw beans that come in here. Yeah. So it was cool when these guys reached out to me, they were like, hey, we have these bags that are left over. Um, and instead of like just, you know, sending them to off to recycling or something, he was like, why don't we use them as like cleanup bags for trash? So they hooked me up with a few bags. We're gonna like not leave this campsite without filling this bag up. Oh yes. Nice and slow. Got our big coffee bag here. Now let's just go around and start looking for some trash. All right, yo, I was wondering where the red solo cup was. Go, 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 go. <laughs> what the heck is this? All right, I think we got it all. No, there's still a giant bucket down there. We're gonna get that bucket. I don't think I need to explain like what this bucket was used for. So I think there's many reasons why we should like clean up even other people's trash. Obviously it's gonna be cleaner for everyone. It's good for the environment. And also I think when we like leave a place really clean, it also will inspire other people when they come to those places not to litter. If people go somewhere and they see trash everywhere, what are they gonna do? They're probably gonna think, well, that's where it belongs. But if it's a pristine, super clean place, they're gonna be less likely to even start the whole thing. You know, it's just other people that haven't learned that it's, it's not like cool to litter, man. It's like cool to pick up stuff. I'm gonna wash my hands now. Some of that stuff was kind of gross. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at you lazy little cow, you. What do you guys think? Is she like more cow or dog? Huh? Are you more cow or dog? You tell me. <laughs> I don't think she's confused. She doesn't even know. So we're gonna fillet this giant catfish now. I don't even know where we're gonna start, but we're gonna start with this mini cleaver here. <laughs> Let's do this. Now we're just gonna try and find the spine uh, and start getting to those bones and the rib cage. We're just gonna be really just nice and careful, slow. This ain't a speed race or nothing. I don't wanna don't wanna waste meat here. I'll leave a link in the video description if you guys want to get yourself a mini cleaver. <laughs> oh man. All right, here we go. All right, here's the ribs. We're just gonna like cleaver chop through them. 
Man, catfish have some really tough ribs. There we go. Whew. That's the other half of that kitty cat, but as you can see, not a lot of meat left on there, huh? Now that's a filet. There we go. So I'll just take that home with the ribs attached, just season that and, and uh, just grill that baby up. We're just gonna remove a little bit of this fat here. Then what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna just cut the whole filet right down the center. What I just did was put a little slit in the skin so I can hold on to it better. Don't even need to move the knife that much. Just move the skin back and forth. And just let that sharp knife do the work. Now we're just gonna cut this baby into some bite-sized chunks. Man, take a look at how beautiful that meat is. All right, so we got all of our chopped fit. All right, so we got all our, all right, we got all our, so we're just gonna cut up a few mushrooms here too. There we go. Ooh, that knife is so like slick and oily from the fish. Now we're just gonna take an onion here. We're gonna add a little bit of uh, a bell pepper. <laughs> all right. We're just gonna throw it all over on a little, little plate here. And we're gonna sprinkle some of this baby on top of there. Oh. There we go. Why they gotta make these bags so hard to open sometimes? I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that all over our catfish. Just kind of massage it in. Mm. So we're just gonna use a little bit of canola oil here. Just put a generous amount in there. I think it's getting close. We're just gonna test that with an onion. I think that's ready. I think it's ready for some fish. What do you think? Is it ready for some fish? I'm, I'm ready for fish. I haven't really eaten anything yet today. It's like afternoon already. That's how it goes when you're filming videos. Everything just takes that much longer. Oh yes. All these happy little chunks of meat going in there. Oh, this is smelling really good. It's smelling really, really good. We're gonna take just a little peek here and see how this catfish is looking. Oh my goodness. Golden brown. Man, that's looking good. Oh man, that's looking so good. Whoa! Onions and mushrooms, always first. Peppers, always last. Same with garlic. Never put garlic in with the onions at the same time. You'll burn your garlic. Now the vegetables I'm gonna cook with just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of butter here. Get that butter down to the sole of this dish. Oh yeah. I'm super curious to see what just the catfish itself tastes like. Man, look at that. That's just beautiful, flaky white meat. Mm. We totally screwed up and forgot the main ingredient for the dish, the Danish sea salt. 
It's killing me, man. Absolutely killing me to be out here. I feel naked without the Danish sea salt in the van somewhere. So we've got some habanero hot sauce and we'll just kind of use that to spice things up. Mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah. It's not the same, but... All right, time to get the uh, peppers in here. Oof, man, look at all that color. I really don't want to overcook the peppers. The peppers, just I just wanted to just give them some flavor. Let some of those sugars and the peppers caramelize. I might have forgotten the Danish sea salt, but I haven't forgotten what's going to happen next. A little cheese. Just a little bit. A little cheese ain't never hurt no one before. Then we're going to take a tortilla. Throw it on top of that cheese. Oh yes. That's right, I've gone wild. Lost my mind, cheese in the pan first. I'll prove to you why this is what you wanna do because you're thinking it's just gonna stick in the pan. But oh no, oh no, look at that. We've got just some ooh, very hot, but nice crunchy crispy cheese on there. The idea is twice the flavor, same amount of calories, baby. <laughs> Man, we could do like three in here at a time. Man, those guys are hot. So we got a little avocado here that we're just gonna add to our mix. All right, we'll throw on a little bit of fish, onions, peppers, the mushrooms, all the good stuff, all the flavor coming together. Here, Kiar, do you want a little piece of, do you want some fish? <laughs> Tika needs a little bit too. Huh, do you want some catfish? Hey, are you, are you not into it? Tika doesn't want the catfish. Unbelievable, she eats everything. She eats everything, but not the catfish. All right, that's fine, then you'll just get more of it. A little avocado on all of them. A little bit of that QP mayo. A little tiny sprinkle of some of the habanero sauce. Then we've got our jar of pickled red cabbage, carrots, um, onions, and some apples in there. All right, all right, here we go, here we go, here goes nothing. Mm. Mm. Wow, that was just, mm. So much flavor, you know, the uh, pickled cabbage and, and apples and onions and stuff, super refreshing. The catfish hit me next, very just delicious, like meaty flavor. The fried onions and mushrooms give it that earthy undertone. Mm, dude. Mm. There's the cheese, found it. I can see why people like eating catfish. <laughs> wow. What do you think, huh? Is this a good campsite? <laughs> Oh man, she loves it. She loves it. Don't you feel it? You like camping. <laughs> Biggest bite that you can possibly take. Kiara's like, I'll take a, I'll take a big bite. Get in there. Get in oh, there. Yeah. Let us know what we think. Like. <laughs> yeah. Here. You know, Tika might not like catfish, but I think we can entice her with some cheesy tortilla. Oh, oh, there we go. She needs a haircut really, really bad. Cleaning service. <laughs> so we're just gonna finish off uh, the rest of those. I think we got enough fish to make two more. Cook up a little more food. We're gonna spend one more night here with the van. Um, and then head back home. So you guys remember, like, comment, subscribe. We will see all of you next week for the next fishing adventure. Till then, you all know it, fish on, baby.